advantage I have then is that I've been, I know the Tony Mortini. I'm actually from East Providence, from I live in Bristol now. Um, went to PC, went to EP, <laughs> pretty much here. I've, I've traveled, I've been over all the bridges. So, <laughs> how Rhode Island got its name? Does anybody know? We'll start with that. How Rhode Island got its name? Yeah. So this is Giovanni <laughs> de Verrazzano. He was an Italian explorer, explored the east coast of the United States. Kind of most famously went through the Straits of Arizona, well, the Straits that he named, the Straits of Arizona, that there's an enormous bridge over now between Brooklyn and Staten Island. Um, but why he's important to us is he sailed up what is now Narragansett Bay. And as he sailed up the bay, he said he thought that the place looked like um, the Isle of Rhodes in Greece. I have to put this on so I can. I'm legal now. This is so weird. Only us tour guys have to wear masks. So, um, so he said it looked like the island of Rhodes, Rhode Island. The other, let's go over here. The other theory about how we got our name, I think that's the most plausible given it's Rhode Island, is there was a Dutch explorer named Adrian Block who was sailing off the coast, saw an island with red cliffs. In Dutch, red island is Root Island. The, the, the island now bears his name, <laughs> Block Island. Um, I think it's probably the Isle of Rhodes. So, history of the State House from a very high level. Before this building, way before this building, <clears throat> the, the state government courts used to actually first meet in houses around the state, individual homes. Then there were five, five state houses built. We're the smallest state in the country, there were five state houses, one in each county. Right, Washington, Kent, Providence, Bristol, and Newport. They are they're all still extant in Warwick or, or Washington County. One is a is a um, is a town hall. In the one that we have in Bristol is used for civic events. Um, Colony House in Newport is sort of a, a, a museum. And the original one in the called the Old State House in Providence is still there up on Benefit Street. Um, so they, they're all still extant, but they, we eventually consolidated here in, call it 1900, but let's go upstairs and I'll tell you the rest of the story. It's over here. The dome, of course, the biggest architectural feature of the place. It is the fourth largest self-supporting marble dome in the country. Uh, and you can see up in the top there are, there's, there are paintings. It's actually cool. So there he is, a statue, the original dean. Of the, of the state of Rhode Island. If you get to the Charter Museum downstairs, you'll see a copy of the deed. The actual one is in the archives, Rhode Island archives. Um, so there's him sort of acquiring the rights of the land um, from the Narragansetts. On the East Bay, where the Narragansetts and the Poconocets are, um, and they, they decided they didn't want to go to the and you could get the property back here. As you know, your grandfather spoke like five languages and learn that well. So he might well have been speaking to them. He was a brilliant man. Wrote the book about how to you know, translate Algonquin. Um, so, so this is sort of the founding moment when Rhode Island as a, as a place came into being. So let's keep going. So for, for you folks, the Roger Williams family, are, are you guys with the Roger Williams family group or you just happen to, he just gave you to us? Just gave you us. Lucky us. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky yes. us. So, so this is the, the third of the paintings. This is religious freedom, right? This is sort of what it was all about for Roger Williams, why he came here, right? He was sort of booted out of the Massachusetts Bay Colony for, for heresies. He, he wrote treatises and he preached dared preach that um, religion should be separate from government. Um, and they had enough of them to kick him on. He walked down here. I mean, you're Roger Williams. Do you know this? He walked down here, found the land he liked, actually went back up to Boston, grabbed some more people, probably my, I believe, my wife's 10th great-grandfather, William Arnold. They came down and settled, met with the, the sachems of the Narragansett tribe, so created a uh, province plan. So that's uh, the religion. So we have 
the acquisition of the land from the Narragansetts, we have freedom of religion, we have engineering and manufacturing, and we have the actual sort of founding. Now again, I went backwards because I wanted to get in, make sure we got into the house. It's an operating librarian. <laughs> um, um, you can take books off these shelves for the most part. Um, they don't leave the room. Um, and they go back to, the, these are the action resolves of the state of Rhode Island, these ones with the red and black stripes. Those are back to, those are the walk, walk past the state of Rhode Island. And they, you know, they continue. That goes back to 1750. So the original book there is 1750. The books up on top, like the cloth bindings you see, are called the Congressional Series Set, which sort of continues around. This is, these are uh, proceedings of Congress, and they were mailed to the states. Um, that goes back to 1790. So um, while Congress was meeting here, Washington was president. Or was he president? Yeah, yeah he was president. Um, so the room, the room is full. The room is, all the way you see here is mahogany. Um, the stairs in the corners and these platforms are actually wrought iron, painted to look like marble. Um, and the only, the only thing that everybody wants to go over and take a look. The only folks who can go up these, there's two sets, are the librarians. They don't let us, thank God, they don't let us on them. If we come over, again, state archives, just come over here, this, this is cool. So Apollo 11 took up the state flags of every state. So every state could say our flag waved on the moon. They took them out and they brought back, we'll call these moon chips. <laughs> moon chips. Now, we do have moon rocks, or a moon rock, in the archives um, down, downtown. We just opened a new building. Um, Nelly did, Nelly Gorbea, our Secretary of State. Open a new building that has a um, that has a moon rock and the you know the original deed and some other original foundational documents. Um, so, I mean, pretty cool thing. If you look up again, so in the ceiling, these were made to look like the bindings of a book, leather bindings. Um, the the symbol seals in each of them were fifteenth uh, and sixteenth and seventeenth century printers in Europe. Um, again, I'll call your attention to the light bulbs and the cool, like, Sputnik uh, chandeliers, um, <laughs> which are kind of, you know, really kind of startling given the rest of the room, but pretty cool, I think. Um, this look, this is my favorite, uh, my favorite printer's mark. This one up here that's in dark, sort of a darker gold. That was um, the insignia of Harvard University. Harvard College, I guess. McKim, of McKim, we White was a Harvard man. Senator Theodore, Fra uh, Governor Theodore Francis Green was a brown man. So he, he said, we are not having the Harvard seal. <laughs> <laughs> and he had it taken down. <laughs> Didn't put the brown seal up. Good for him. He put another printer seal. Never noticed those. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. And you can see the RIs all the way around. The sort okay. of see them like every other every other one or so, um, and even here these are sort of florets in the back along the uh, the same sort of florets, same sort of a callback to those florets. So let's uh, <laughs> let's continue. Gilbert Stewart, who's a Rhode Islander, painted that. It's one of the very few portraits of Washington standing, a full. Full Washington. Um, you know, probably the most famous portrait of his is it's unfinished at the bottom, it sort of falls apart. Um, second most may be on the dollar bill. Um, but this is a, a woman who came from California apparently last year just to see that portrait. So there are many. Um, Replicas of foundational documents. Um, this is the deed, the replica of the deed. Um, the original one is in the in the archives. Um, this is the deed that you saw in the original, the first painting with the autonomy and Canonicus and Roger Williams. The cool thing about it is the two sachems signed their name, signed their name because um, the, the indigenous language was a spoken language, right? They signed their names with. Um, with uh, arrows and bows. Oh. 
and then the whoever transcribed the deed wrote their names next to it. And there were, you know, there are only so many ways you can represent a bow and arrow. So eventually they get duplicated. So it's just a sort of way to say, this is me. I, I signed this, and you can see that I signed it. So this is the Providence Civil Compact from Roger Williams and um, the Sachems. Interestingly, uh, right, right, uh, I saw it before. No, I can't, my eyes haven't adjusted. Uh, one of these signatures is Benedict Arnold, right there, Benedict Arnold. He was the first, the first governor of the state, buried down in um, on Pelham Street, in Newport. And again, the Benedict Arnold's uh, great uncle. <laughs> um, in my, that's why I said my, my, um, I always qualify it because that's my also my. Mom. So these are patents in the parliamentary compact was a patent was sort of an interim step to Rhode Island having its own colony. Um, the, um, the, the, the king was sort of in turmoil, uh, royalty, so that's as good as we could do for then um, to sort of give us a, um, uh, confer the rights of a settlement, but it didn't really confer the land, right? Um, <clears throat> if you come along here, now this is interesting. So this is Roger, this says Roger Williams's compass and timepiece. And if you look at it, it sure looks like it. I was told last week that it's a replica. But this does not say replica, so I don't I don't know. But it's interesting. The compass is a compass. The timepiece is a um, sundial, <laughs> so, which you'd need a compass to, to use, <laughs> right? You have to know where you are. Um, we'll go with replica because the more conservative. Yeah, I think it's uh, at the archives of the Rhode Island. Is it the real one? Is Society. okay. And it's valuable as well. Thanks. This is interesting. So so. A guy by the name of John Clark uh, went to England, uh, I don't know, originally with Roger Williams, if anybody knows, or Roger came along later, to negotiate with the Crown for a charter to establish the colony. Um, yeah, and he went see, with him and he stayed. And he, yeah, he stayed and in Clark stayed. stayed. Yes. And Roger came, came back. back. Right. Three years later. Thanks. Um, this is um, Warwick uh, men. Um, gave money to keep John Clark in England to help fund the trip. And there's, you know, how much they each gave. I don't know how it was established, probably by the amount of land they had, or um, I'm not sure. This is the charter that um, John Clark and Roger Williams negotiated from the Crown to establish um, this, the colony of Rhode Island. Um, this is the original document. Uh, it was it was stored on a piece of cardboard in a safe. Um, they took it out. It's obviously been conserved. It's stored in a case similar to the National Art, the, the Declaration of Independence and Constitution, um, bulletproof, probably bombproof, um, certainly UV proof. You know, argon gas, all that good stuff. Um, starts over here, goes over there. This is this is effectively the king's signature. Charles II. Um, it's not a. It's not signed, um, and it's interesting. It was written. <clears throat> it was written by John Clark. I don't know if it was physically written by John Clark, but the language was written by John Clark. Um, but the physical writing, there's no punctuation, but you'll see bold letters. That's like the separation of sentences and paragraphs and thoughts instead of periods and. Um, and so the the the. What Rhode Island was doing in terms of religious freedom was was called a lively experiment, right? Because it had it wasn't being done here anymore, or anywhere, and it was called an experiment. Because if it failed, we were going to yank they were going to yank it, right? Obviously, it didn't. But interestingly, if you see here, and whereas um, um, the lively experiment, Charles refers to it right here, and the language is there. Um, Lively experiment that the most flourishing civil state may stand and best be maintained with the full liberty and religious concerns. Um, and the language is, is right there. It was unradical to. It was, oh, nobody, you didn't do that. Yeah. Right. Um, now, interestingly, the, this stood as our de facto constitution until 1843. So for 180 years, this was our, this was, these were our governing precepts. Um, and how we how we govern ourselves. So uh, I love this document because I'm a history geek, um, and to see the real thing always is pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. 
It's on parchment, um, obviously. What were the predominant religions back when? Brother well, the, sort of the founding religion was the Anglican Church. Um, uh, uh, Roger preached as a as a Puritan up in Salem, and um, uh, and then a Baptist. He sort of the First Baptist Church, but he sort of fell away from almost all of those. Um, uh, but that was okay because he said, you know, it's okay for all the all of the religions to flourish. Um, we don't know what what religion he died as. Um, Is there a predominant religion now in Rhode Island? In Rhode Island, yeah, Catholicism, Catholicism. Or Roman. Uh, yeah. I, I believe at one point we were mm -hmm. the most Catholic state in the country. I, I don't believe that means that most of the people, the majority of the folks, are Catholic. It's just it's the predominant. Um, denomination okay. in in the state. Um, so uh, my Italians landed in 1911. So <laughs> my wife goes back 11 generations. I go back two. <laughs> um, so that's it. If you want to stay in here and look around, you're free to do that. If you'd like to leave, thank you very much for thank you for joining us. Yes. 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 I um, good job. I, I got to tell you, I was nervous as a cat, thinking I'm going to take descendants of Roger Williams around his house. <laughs> but you guys have been great. I've Did learned a lot. And oh, thank you for adopting us. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lot, which is great. It's always good for the knowledge is always good. So thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that was great. And no tour would be complete without dragging you through a gift shop. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> there is a visitor center. You'll see it is a very nice gift shop, though. <laughs>